Yo, you guys, what is going on? Blazonary here. And today in this video, I have a very special review of Are They Worth It? Right here, we have the Nike Adapt Earl BB, the second rendition of Nike's self-lacing sneakers. Well, technically third, if you consider the Nike Mags, the first self-lacing sneakers made to the public, and then now the second self-lacing sneakers that released to the public. So we're gonna be taking a look at these in depth. We're gonna connect them to the app. I'm gonna wear them. We're gonna go out to Soho, New York City. We're gonna test them out, see what my thoughts and opinions are. And we're also gonna compare them to the two other self-lacing Nike systems that are already out and present. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I flew into New York just to make this video, but before I could even land, TSA had a problem with my Nike Adapt BBs. The 1.0s and the 2.0s are both not TSA friendly. And then for some reason, my first pair wouldn't work. These things are just not working. Like you try and loosen or tie in and you just get this horrible looking message. After some internet digging, we found an article that told us how to hard reset the sneakers and thus solve their problem. Thank you to Sam Sheffer and the guys over at 368 for helping me make the Are They Worth It series a reality. We'll talk about these a little later on in the video. I first want to go ahead and jump straight into this right here, the brand new product that released, what was it, a little before All-Star Weekend? They released basically on All-Star Weekend. You had the ability to reserve them on an app, you could buy them on Nike sneakers, or you could go to the stores during the weekend and pick them up yourself, which is what I did. Let's go ahead and crack this open. So the box is, itself is like a whole experience. It's got a little handle right here, nice graphics on the outside. So you do this first. Take that, pop that out, opens up. And so you have the compartment for the sneakers and then the sneakers themselves. There's nothing left in this box. Sneakers, open this. You have the charging pad, which is a very cool design, actually. I'm a big fan of this. You have the silver plastic bag that contains the charger and a little informative pamphlet about the sneakers. The sneakers come with a block and a USB-C charging cable. Big fan of the USB-C because a lot of new products nowadays are using it. Plug that in right here. Plug this into a wall charger. Before you wear the sneakers, I would definitely recommend giving them a full charge so you can go ahead and update them on the app. Luckily though, the sneakers are already charged and we don't need to do that. It uses like an inductive charging system. I'm not exactly sure how the sneakers themselves charge. You place them on there and you're charging. One shoe tree right there. The second shoe tree. So you actually have quite a couple pieces before you even get to the sneaker. So what you're gonna wanna do next is you're gonna wanna download the app that comes with the sneaker. So it's a free app on the app store. It's called Nike Adapt. You can go ahead and connect by hitting next, connect your left shoe. So what you're gonna do is hold it near the buttons, connect your right shoe, same thing. Make them yours, adjust your shoes and find the perfect fit. So now you're actually gonna wanna put on your sneakers. All right guys, so we're doing something a little unorthodox. We're gonna just go ahead and get this going on the table. So put on your sneakers. They will begin to adjust automatically. Don't worry, they won't get too tight. Start, you, even have, you can even have the option to put on your orthotics. Uh, that's actually really cool. Start adapting to your feet. Got a little animation. I guess the first thing you could say is the motor. The motor is a little loud. I wouldn't recommend doing this on like a library or like your classroom. A little impractical. And I think it would be weird, especially if they just like adjusted while you're sitting in class and it made that loud motor noise. I don't know. I just don't know if I'm a fan of that. I do know that they market this as a basketball shoe, but if you were gonna take it from the court to lifestyle and place it in real world situations, that motor could be a problem. So then you can fine tune the sneaker. You can slide the left to adjust the left. So I'm gonna just put it all the way up. And that is tightening my sneaker. Oh my God, that's like, yeah, if I'm gonna go play ball, like that is the way to go. Let's make it all the way loose. Let's see the difference. So loose comparison feels like maybe I'm slipping on like, uh, like an everyday sneaker. Like think about the sneaker you'd slip on every day. That's what that's doing. And it's kind of adjusting a little bit too to my, my foot arch. So it's still the same amount of looseness, just to adjust it a little bit. I felt that like grip it a little differently. Get the most comfy fit, I'd probably do like more so down here. You can do both at the same time. There's even an update, but I hear that takes a very long time. So we're gonna do that later. For $350, you have a sneaker that not only tightens itself, but you can change the color to whatever you're wearing. So we got blue accents right there. I'm gonna make that purple, make that pink, 
You can make that orbit red, bright crimson, orange, laser orange, yellow, electric green, green spark, white, aura green, hero blue. There's quite a bit of customizability here. You have a whole interface. Now for me, I don't see a reason as to why you change them from a different color other than blue or like white or something because you have that icy sole. I'm curious to see over time what that's gonna look like. If they're gonna get like piss yellow like some Jordans do, I would maybe have them, you know, like the yellow on the little thing right there. For right now, like they're blue, I'm gonna keep them that blue color. I think that's dope. To get a full charge on these sneakers, you do need to have them plugged in and sitting for three hours. From a week all the way up to 10 days on a full charge, that's pretty impressive considering you can take them from the court to lifestyle. Most people I'm sure that wear them lifestyle could get a full 10 days out of this. The app is not only on iOS, it's also on Android, which is pretty cool. However, I've heard recently that the Android users are experiencing some bugs. I'm sure that's gonna be fixed. I'm not a spokesperson for Nike or this video is not even sponsored in any way. I'm just the guy that's telling you my opinion my opinion and the facts. And they even have some information like if the shoe is not functioning properly, you can go ahead and contact them at their support. And so now how do these fare against the 1.0s? This is my personal pair of 1.0s uh, that came out when they did. I'll throw the date of course on the screen. I personally didn't wear them that much. I thought that the technology, like although it was cool, it's not something I could see myself using every single day, especially on this sneaker because the technology really got upgraded in my opinion compared to this one. To start, there is no app for these. Can't look at your settings or anything like that. It's all based on how it feels on your foot. The second thing is right off the bat, you'll notice too, there's only a little blue dot and a little blue dot for the tightening loosing. A lot of people didn't know which one was which. Uh, the tighten is the top. That's like super tight. And then you also have the loose on the bottom. Literally this a little unresponsive too. and it kind of didn't really do it itself either. Definitely, like right off the bat, just from doing that, the huge improvements already. You put these on and then it senses. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on, of course. So let's put the left one on. Let's see, second. It also adjusts as soon as you put them on your feet, whereas the first ones take a moment or two. Right off the bat, these are wicked tight, like wicked tight. Let's see. And the system is really hard to get to, honestly. Like these buttons are not the move. So that's like semi-loose. And it just went ahead and tightened itself again on its own. I didn't want that. It's too tight now. All right, let's see if it's gonna try and sense me. Oh, it wants it to be that tight, yo. It wants it to be that tight. So there really isn't much customizability with these laces, it seems like. Another thing is too, though, I will say design-wise, I would have to give this sneaker the prettier of the two just because of the fact that this truly looks like a basketball sneaker. Whereas this, I feel like you can maybe pull this out and wear it on the street just a little easier. And I also think that the blue lights right here are a little bit more of a flex in terms of Nike lighting than these ones because they're a bit more ostentatious. Kind of remind me of like the Nike mags. The, the whole bottom of them lights up. On the back, you also have a plate right here, the Earl plate, and there's like three dots. And I think that if you do this, I'm not sure yet. There you go. You see the blinking light and you see that little animation it does? I think that's really cool. Like the way that this whole system looks, I think is great. In terms of lacing and the product itself, definitely would have to give the system to this one. So if I could, I'd take this look, put it on this sneaker. Let's talk about the charging block. The difference is this right here is like a puck and it, it's magnetized on the bottom. I'm not a fan of the puck. They don't exactly sit down. And if you put them like this, well, I don't want my sneakers, I don't want the side of my sneakers on the floor. Flimsy, I don't know. With the charging pad, it just feels like, feels like a product. This sneaker, I don't think is worth the $720 price tag. I bought these for resale for $360 at a sneaker convention. The proof is in the pudding. These are just not worth $720. These, however, these are worth the $350. Compared to these already, just in terms of being the same system, it's better, there's an app, there's more customizability. It's just overall a better sneaker, definitely worth it. 
Definitely not worth it. Let's talk about lastly, of course, the Nike mags. I'm gonna show you the lacing system and we're of course still gonna compare it. I know just from memory that the Nike mag itself has a lacing system on the inside flap of the sneaker right here. There's a green arrow for the Titan. There's a red arrow for the Lucent on the bottom. And there's even a little yellow dot which is the lights for the sneaker. And my personal pair, like you can hear it, I'm clicking them, they're not coming on. RIP 2011 mags. They have the same lacing system as this, so they're not that good in the lacing system. They should have waited and used these. And the second thing is, I mean, they're the Nike freaking mags, so of course they're gonna be a lot better than these, regardless. So they should have really used this, honestly. Like this lacing system is a lot better. Let's go ahead and put these two on my feet and you guys are gonna be able to see the differences and the mechanisms working together while they're both on. So we're gonna put on the right one. And let's see, what does it do? It takes a moment. Make these a little tighter. Oh my God, that's tight. Make them a little looser again. And then I'm just gonna take, oh my God, you can't take them off without doing this. That's a, that's a feature right there to bend over every time and do that. Now hearing them again, these sound louder and this doesn't sound as loud. In terms of comfort and which one tightens the way it's supposed to, this one, once again, is just way too tight and this one remembered that I like it a little looser. In terms of overall comfort, like the sneaker itself, definitely would give it to this one. Even though it is a basketball sneaker, like when it's fully loosened, it is really nice. It just feels like there's technology in the bottom right here, like it does. This just feels seamless all around. And I also wanted to bring on my good friend, Sam Sheffer. <laughs> Sam is a content creator based here in New York City. And welcome to the channel, formally once again. Hello, hello. What are your What are your opinions on this sneaker? I think, I think you nailed most of it, I would say. I'm with you that the silhouette, I think these are way more fire. I don't like this charging block either. It's so impractical. They really went from a 1.0 product, and these are literally called the Adapt, Hyper Adapt 1.0, and these are the Adapt BB really refined product charging pad makes way more sense and I didn't even realize before you were I was listening to you these don't even have an app so you're just kind of stuck with the shoe and it's gonna do it at whatever it wants I do like the lights on the back of this yeah. that's really hot I'm not sure why Nike didn't do that because these backs are like kind of similar in a yeah. way um, I guess we'll just have to wait for the next version definitely worth the 350 like these are almost looking back at this is like how did people spend like you didn't even spend the full no. retail on these exactly um, I just think it's really cool that like we can sit here at a table make a YouTube video about self-lacing sneakers such an accomplishment like 2019 we're here in the future Future. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. He also made a video about the Adapt BBs. He went a little more in depth than I did, huh? Pretty big gadget nerd, and I like to understand the inner workings. Like the market for these is like hypebeasts, nerds, people that, you know, have mobility issues that maybe can't tie their shoes, mm -hmm. you know, people that want to like live in the future, be on the cutting edge. I'm going to definitely rock my pair. You've been rocking your pair too, I wore right? them to New York. Yeah. They're straight up like they're doing good. You think that we're going to see a lot of people wearing these shoes like in the I, next couple months? I think so because not only is the price point good, a lot of people can get their hands on this even a couple months from now and it's still relevant. Do you think Nike's going to do more colorways for this? I hope that they do the same sneaker again in a different colorway and I hope they take Take their time to really get another version right. If you're gonna sit here and make this sneaker and have it be all badass with these lights, but really downgrade that lighting system, but really upgrade your lacing system, let's see you do both. Let's see you put the best of both worlds in one, and that's what I'm waiting for next. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, can we please see if we can smash 17,369 likes? Super specific. I want to see if we can make it happen. I don't care if it takes a year to make it happen. We'll do it. Really like these. I'll see you guys in another Blazonary video. It's Blazonary. I'm out. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great night day. Whenever you're watching, shout out my post notification gang.